So I'm here today to talk to all of you about educational inequality, the challenge, and what we can do to solve it, how we can make a difference. In order to start, I want to start with an exercise. I'm trying to see all of you, but it's very difficult. Um, I'd like all of you to pretend that you are children in rural China. You're low-income children, and you're about to enter your first day of school, your first day of elementary school. Everybody, please stand up. Okay. You're ready to go to school. You're excited. Yeah. Now, how xing fan. Now, this is what happens over the course of your educational trajectory. Um, could everybody from here to my left please sit down? Okay. You are the children who did not graduate from elementary school. As a result, your life prospects are in extremely limited. Everybody from here to my left, please sit down. Okay. All of you did not graduate from middle school. You left school before you turned 16. It's, we're laughing because, you know, Obviously, all of you have been very successful. You have graduated from middle school, you're in college, or you know, you finished college. Um, but all of these kids didn't finish middle school. They left before 16, and as a result, they have very, very limited opportunities in life. Everybody from here to my left, please sit down. You guys, too, sit down. <laughs> sit. OK. You didn't graduate from high school. You made it into high school. You passed the Zhongkao. But you didn't, you didn't make it through high school. Now, I see someone in a red jacket, a woman in a red jacket. No, it's, it's your turn. Look at me. Yep, you. Everyone in front of you, sit down. Please, you sit down too. I'm sorry. You also need to sit down. No, no, behind her, stay standing up. Stay standing up. The people behind her, please stay standing up. Stand up. Yes, you, stand up. Okay, everybody else sit down. All right, everybody please look at these students. Okay. These are the students who passed the Gaokao and got into college. All of you, because the education you've received is not as high quality as that of your urban counterparts, um, you've made it into college, I actually don't know if you're going to graduate. <laughs> Today, in China, 70% of students that grow up in urban communities will go on to college. They'll go on to tertiary education. In rural communities, less than 5% of students go on to college. We've seen what that means. All of these kids, almost everybody that was in this room, potential and opportunity, wasted. Opportunities that kids do not have. More than 50% of China's population lives in rural communities, which means that 190 million children, and I think that's a low estimate, some people say as many as 220 million children are being left behind. So this is a problem on a global scale. It's a huge, huge challenge. Why do we have this problem? Why is there so much educational inequality? Why can't I make this work? Okay. Um, the challenge of educational inequality is very complex. 
It's a huge problem and it's a complex problem. There are issues of poverty. There's an issue of a shortage of qualified teachers. There are issues of mindsets. There are many people who do not believe that children from low-income backgrounds can achieve at high levels or that they should go to college, that they should have the same kinds of opportunities as kids from more affluent backgrounds. There are policy issues. So there are many, many different issues. Now, at Teach for China, we're inspired by the vision that one day, all children will have access to an excellent education. Every child. We know that every child is capable of achieving at very high levels. And we believe that this is a problem we absolutely can solve. It's a huge problem. It's a complex problem. But it's a solvable problem. And if this is a problem we can solve, it's a problem we must solve. It's incumbent upon us. We have a moral imperative to solve this problem. It's perhaps the greatest challenge we face in the world today. And it's on us to solve it. So how do we solve this huge, complex problem? Well, it takes leadership. It takes incredible leadership. It's going to take outstanding young leaders like each of you who are truly committed to making a difference. Teach for China's model, you can think of it as a leadership development approach, a leadership development model. What we do is, in the short term, we give outstanding young people, outstanding young leaders, the chance to be leaders in low-income classrooms. We give them the chance to work for two years in low-income rural schools and to put their students onto a different path, to give their students the opportunities that they deserve. How do we do that? We recruit outstanding recent graduates from China and from the US. These graduates are from very diverse backgrounds. Almost none of them actually come from teacher training backgrounds. They're just people who have incredible leadership potential um, and have shown that they're capable of achieving great things. We train them very intensively for the incredibly challenging work that's in front of them. And we work closely with our government partners to place them in low-income schools where they'll be able to teach for two years and work with students. Then we support them throughout the two years to help them have a truly transformational impact in their classrooms. That's the short-term impact of Teach for China. Now, the long-term impact is that these fellows, we call our teachers fellows, after spending two years successfully teaching in a low-income community, in a low-income classroom, they've seen the challenge of educational inequality. They've seen that this is a solvable problem. And they will go on to work from across sectors to solve this problem, to continue to work for low-income children. I talked about how incredibly comp complex this problem is, how incredibly big it is. We need a generation of leaders who understand the problem, who've seen firsthand that it can be solved, and who will work to address all of the different issues that are a part of this challenge. So that's what Teach for China is doing. We're cultivating leaders. We're a young organization. We're in our third year of implementation. But already we've seen the incredible power of this model to have an impact. I'm going to talk about just two teachers very quickly. Zhang Qiang is a graduate of Tsinghua Daxue. He's an engineering major, top of his class, could be doing anything. He took the opportunity to make a difference and is working in Dajai Zhongxue in Yunxian, Yunnan, one of the lowest performing schools in that county. In just one year, his first year as a teacher, Zhang Qiang took his class of students, about 60 students, helped them go from being one of the lowest performing classes in one of the lowest performing schools to being the number one class in the county. All of a sudden, these students have a totally different trajectory. All of them. Alex Jones took a class of kids who had never encountered English in Chui, so they're seventh graders, took them to the very top of their school. And these kids are not only doing well on exams, I've spent time with them. They love English. They're able to speak English. They're able to understand English. Again, he's completely changed their life prospects. Alex and Zhang Tiang and the others like them are giving these kids the opportunities they deserve. Now, after two years, 
Alex and Zhang Qiang and the others like them, they're not going to be able to leave this effort behind. They're not going to be able to stop. Teach for China is a young organization, but even though we recruit our fellows from very diverse backgrounds, and almost none of them come in expecting to be teachers or expecting to stay in education, at this point, we've seen that two-thirds of them, after they finish their term in the school, continue to work in education. A third of them have actually joined Teach for China as staff, which is incredibly exciting. They're working with us to make a difference. And Teach for China is working to develop more opportunities for our alumni to go into positions of leadership from which they can affect change in an accelerated way. That means working in policy. It means working in government. It means working in teaching and school leadership. It also means working in civil society, working in responsible business. Now, as I said, we're a young organization, but our approach, many of you are probably familiar with Teach for America. Can you raise your hand if you've heard of Teach for America? Okay, a lot of people have heard of it. Um, Teach for America is a proven model. It, it's a successful model. And they're the ones who took this approach first. They started their program 20 years ago in the US, and today they're the largest education nonprofit in the US. They have nearly 10,000 teachers in schools. They have more than 20,000 alumni. Um, and Teach for America teachers and alumni are working together to completely change the face of education uh, in, in the US today. Teach for America has seen over 20 years that two-thirds of their alumni stay in education and continue to work, even more continue to work for low-income children. Um, and when you look at the greatest education reform efforts in the US now, they're being driven by Teach for America alums. The fastest improving school districts in the US, Washington DC, New Orleans, are run by Teach for America alumni. The charter school movement, started by Teach for America alumni, run by Teach for America alumni. So wherever you see children, low-income children, being given access to an excellent education, you find Teach for America alumni. They've truly begun to develop a generation of leaders working for this cause, and we've seen through what they're doing that it's possible. Now, the challenge in China is huge. And we talked about 190 to 220 million children. And like I said, we're a new organization. Right now, we have 150 teachers working in two provinces, Yunnan and Guangdong. In Guangdong, we work in Shantou. We work very closely with provincial government and with national government. And our ambition for the organization is that by 2015, we'll have 1,000 fellows, 1,000 teachers on the ground, 1,000 really outstanding young leaders working for change and reaching 150,000 students. Already in our third year, we're reaching 20,000 students. So this is the trajectory that Teach for China is on. Um, and I want to encourage all of you to be part of making a difference. The next thing I'd like to do is show you a video. I've talked a lot about this, um, but I want you to see what it's actually like for our fellows on the ground and to get to meet some of our students. So if we could please cue the video. Could somebody put on the video, please? Am I supposed to put on the video? Excuse me. Sorry. Could we put on the video? Oh, thank you. Things don't come easy for the kids here. <laughs> they're, they're told they can't. As their teacher, it's my job to say that they can. Every child deserves a chance. If this is their first and only chance, and if they don't succeed now, they're never going to succeed in school. And schooling makes a world of difference out here. By the time they hit seventh grade, the kids who have fallen behind are just lost so they will drop out in 8th grade. The goal of Teach for China is to bridge the gap of educational inequity between rural and urban communities in China.
，中国现在恰恰就是西部的和农村的教育太过于落后了。The country is growing so fast, but there are people that are getting left behind. Teach for China tackles this problem by recruiting outstanding recent college graduates from the U.S. and China, and placing them for two years in some of China's most under-resourced schools. Graduates. From Chinese universities and American graduates from American universities, together, 都有一个共同的、特别相似的理想，然后都在做着同样的事情，所以我们的精神生活和精神世界是特别特别相似的。Sometimes when you go into a class and you have a very clear idea of what you want them to learn for that day, and they master that material. You're like, wow! I did my work for today. I feel incredibly satisfied with life. Planning for a class, having it go extremely well, seeing the kids learn, and then just walking out of the classroom feeling a bit like a rock star. Every day in their classrooms, Teach for China fellows are demonstrating that students in low-income communities can achieve at absolute levels. And it's this demonstration, this proof, that educational inequity is a solvable problem. Which leaves us no excuse not to be involved and not to be a part of this important solution. I feel as though I've grown more in these nine months than I have. Over the course of my close to 24 years of life, 呃，挺想建一个学校，然后就这辈子就花在这个学校的建设上面。We're here because we want to make a difference. So. He said what I want to say, which is we should all be working to make a difference. Thank you all very much.